Crocs is up an impressive 20% in the couple of hours that we have from this Monday trading session. In this video, we're going to go over why this happened, why it had been on a downtrend before this, and a quick analysis over the company and why I believe it's such a good buy and why I made it one of my positions after I launched the video on it a month ago. So as you can see for the price movement since the 14th of December, this stock has been trading down considerably and had lost around 21% of its value from almost all time highs. Since then, only today, it has risen over 20% and it has gotten back over the $100 mark. But why is it up 20% today? Well, this article tells us exactly what happened. Crocs Inc. said it expects 2023 revenues of approximately $3.95 billion, which would represent over 11% growth for the year. Why is this important? Well, this is because it's slightly above its guidance of 10%, but you're going to say, hmm, but they're saying that the growth is going to be just a bit higher of what their guidance was, right? But the thing is, this company had fallen so much since December 14th, all the way up to yesterday or fr past Friday, that it was extremely undervalued and the reason why it fell so much was because we'll see in the preview in the next article nike actually released earnings and in their guidance they say they expected less sales this quarter and the whole of 2024 so for crocs to come up and say you know what nike you might be lowering your sales guidance we're going to increase our sales guidance because we're doing really well right now well that is what has driven the stock price up today and you can see in another article by uh, seeking alpha they said that it's string strong free cash flow generation enabled them to pay almost 300 million dollars in debt in the whole quarter to bring the full year debt down to 665 million so this company had a big debt problem at the start of the year since they did a hey dude acquisition and now they're being able to pay it down at an incredible pace look at that almost pay paying more than half a million of it down in the first year of the having the debt Additionally, just look at the comments they said. We're coming into 2024 from a position of strength and are making the decision to reinvest our best-in-class margins into focused strategic investments as we continue to set ourselves up for the long-term durable growth, noted the CEO. So this is great news because right now they are saying, while well, Nike, which is the biggest footwear company in the whole of the US, said that the, we had to be careful in the retail space because there was being a lot of weakness from the consumer and they were reducing their guidance for sales for 2024 and for this quarter. On the other hand, we have Crocs, which is a way smaller company, more undervalued, saying, no, we're in a position of strength. We have a lot of debt, but look at us. We have paid a $665 million down this year alone from extremely high free cash flow generation and we are still making investments with the rest of the free cash flow we have into strategic long-term growth and one thing that this company has going for them is that when they are done paying the full debt those 665 million dollars of free cash flow generation which will probably be higher when they're done paying the debt will go into either a dividend into either doing share buybacks or into reinvesting or doing more acquisitions, which will just push the value of Crocs even higher. This company is so undervalued and so amazing, but let's look at what actually caused their price to fall down so much. In December 22nd, just before Christmas, Nike's stock 11% reversal leads retail route. So this is what I was saying. If we take in the graph from December 22nd all the way up to Friday 5th, Crocs had only decreased in price decreasing over 13% and there were no news from Crocs. This drop just comes from Nike's drop. The whole reason why Crocs dropped 13% in a couple of weeks was because in its earnings report, they slashed the outlook for the revenue in its current fiscal year and they cited an expected year-over-year -year decline in the ongoing holiday quarter tied to weak e-commerce demand and supply chain issues. So since the leader of the market is having these disruptions and these problems, everyone thought that every other company in the retail space, as you can see here, was suffering the same thing. Added as JD, Puma fell more than 5%, Diggs down 4%, Food Locker 4, 5%, and Crocs in that day, you can see that also lost a lot of its value. Getting to the point where it lost 3% just because of the news of Nike and over the following weeks it led to a 14% decline in price. That is why today it's up so much with the good news. But why is Crocs such a good company? 
what you can see here in alpha spread that it is currently undervalued based on a discounted cash flow analysis even if in, in its worst case scenario it's just undervalued even with its price search right now as you can see here it detected a possible value trap because in theory the price has never actually reached its intrinsic value which is determined by the dcf however i do believe that it is undervalued and that it will someday reach that intrinsic value because i think this stock is just misunderstood Right now, of course, it makes sense that it is under the intrinsic value due to their high level of debt, but in the future, they will slash through that. I am 100% sure they paid more than half a million dollars in cutting debt only this year. And look at how stable their revenues quarter after quarter are, how they have increased since 2021, how they are expected to keep increasing, and their operating income the same. Super stable. Net income, of course, it has had some way ups and way downs from 2021 to 2022, but overall, it is extremely stable. Free cash flow, we can see here stability and good growth with four quarters of negative free cash flow. But this was for the acquisition for Hey Dude. And now they are back to increasing the free cash flow and paying down the debt. Here again, the capital expenditures from the acquisition, they increased a lot, but now they're back to minimals. In operating cash flow, which is easier to see, you can see how stable this company is. And the growth rates are incredible, increasing over 10%. That is amazing. Their balance sheet looks amazing. Of course, it's not at the best spot right now since they're paying back all the debt that they accrued from the acquisition. This is where it gets interesting. The efficiency of this company is unmatched by any of their peers. They have a 55% gross margin and look at how stable this has been. It doesn't move even in COVID, even before. It's always stuck at around 50%. Their operating margin now does move a little bit more, but since 2021, it stayed at over 25%. Now, if we look at their efficiency ratings, which is return on equity, which is at a 74%, which is incredible. However, this number is a bit biased because of the amount of debt they have right now. So it's easier to just look at return on capital employed, which is an incredible 27%. This number, whenever it's higher than 10%, it's good. And the higher it goes, the better. And look at how solid this is for this company. The only worrying thing is the solvency score. So that's where we're going to dive into next. So you can see now Wall Street price targets, the lowest one is in the downside and the average is 20% up with the highest one being around 170. And you can see their competitors, Skechers, Deckers, Stephen Madden, they all trade at a PE ratio, which is way higher than a Crocs right now. If we look over here, there have been a lot of shares sold. However, it doesn't worry me because the majority of these shares sold were more than six months ago. And these ones over here are regular sales from some of the company's directors. If you look at their return over the past three years, their PE has declined, even though their earnings have grown by 62% in three years. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand. I cannot get behind it. And if we look at the solvency report and we look at it from a quarterly basis, Look at how well they're paying their debt. This is what I've been telling you about. They spent $665 million paying back debt in 2023. And when they're done paying back the debt, and this gets to a reasonable lever, level, either a welcome dividend or welcome share buyback. So I'm telling you, this was a great call. I hope it gets more recognition now that they are increasing its guidance and everyone can take a look at how solid of a company this is. So thank you for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. I'll see you in the next one.